Hello everyone, on today's video we're going to show you how you can use fixes in order to determine the wind speed. Now I normally would fire this one up in the simulator, but I was having some technical difficulties earlier. But the good news is that I did go ahead and get myself enough information to actually perform this. So when you want to go ahead and determine what the wind speed is in the air, assuming you don't know it initially, you're going to need a couple different pieces of information. The first thing you're going to need to know is you're going to need to know what your estimated dead reckoning position is. Uh, this is simply going to be the position in the air that you would know that if you were following this particular heading for this particular speed at this particular time, this is how far you would go. The second thing you're going to need to know is you're going to need to have an accurate fix as far as where you actually are in the air. If you compare those two next to each other, you have the ability to actually determine what the wind speed is. So let's go ahead and take a look at my scenario. So the first thing I did is I took this little fix here out in this little field. Uh, this is my zero o'clock fix. Uh, when I hit this fix, I knew I was very, very, very precise with it because I checked my radios and actually did some triangulation to do so. Then what I did is set a five minute timer. Then at the end of the five minute timer, I went ahead and estimated where my position is uh, using a dead reckoning technique. I'll always look at that in a second. Afterwards, at the same time, I actually performed myself a standard radio fix using, again, two different bearings in order to determine where I actually was in the sky. What I noticed is after comparing these two values, there is a pretty significant difference. But what we need to do is we need to figure out what the wind direction is as well as what the wind speed is. So the first thing I did was my dead reckoning fix. Uh, the way I did that is I took my airspeed, which I knew was 125 knots, and I traveled for a total of five minutes. So five minutes divided by 60 minutes in an hour, means I traveled 0.083 total um, points of an hour. So if I multiply that by my true airspeed, I know that I traveled 10.41 nautical miles. Now, if I went all the way to this fix, said measure distance, and were to measure this down, I also know that I was traveling on a heading of 210 magnetic. Putting those two things together goes ahead and gets me this first spot. I'll go ahead and draw that line out real quickly, just so you can go ahead and see it. I'm just going to go pull it right to that first spot. The next thing we did is we, of course, were traveling and using radio fixes so we could accurately identify where we actually were on the ground. Now, you don't have to take a radio fix for this. What you could actually do is you could actually go ahead and use a position on the ground in order to do this process as well. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and grab this. I'm going to go ahead and start my original excellent fix, go ahead and measure some distance. I'm going to measure to where my radio fix actually is. Now, there's a lot of information we're going to get from this right away. The first thing we know is that since we traveled and what that tells us is that tells us how fast we actually traveled. Now I notice I've traveled a distance of 10 nautical miles in that five minutes time. Uh, what does that mean for us? Well, that's interesting because our estimated distance was supposed to be 10.42 nautical miles. Now, since uh, we didn't get those two to agree with each other, that simply indicates the fact that we have some form of a headwind that's actually slowing us down. Since we have a distance and we have a time, we also have a speed. Let's see here. So our total distance is about 10 nautical miles. Uh, we know that it took us five minutes, so about one, two, three. No, a little too fast. Uh, we'll try one, two, zero. There we are. So we know that our actual ground speed was 120 knots, even though our indicated airspeed, our true airspeed, I should say, I should be specific, was 125 knots. That means we had some form of a five knot headwind. Now this actually makes sense if you look at it from the side because my estimated position is supposed to be here, but my actual position is a little bit farther back from there. As a matter of fact, we need to calculate this distance in order to know exactly how far off it is. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna do a quick little couple set of measurements in order to estimate where we should be. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this position right here. I'm gonna go ahead and measure some distance real fast. And we're gonna estimate, actually we really need to bring this line out further, how far to the west we were based on our position. I'm gonna do the best I can to get this to a nine or zero true, line that up, and it looks like the distance is going to be 0.8 nautical miles. So that means in five minutes, the wind has blown us 0.8 nautical miles towards the east. The second thing we're going to have to calculate is how far to the north we are relative to where we're supposed to be. Now, relatively speaking, you can see we're further north than we are south from where we should be, which means that we have some kind of headwind. So I'm simply going to go ahead and do the exact same process. I'm going to go ahead and start myself a new drawing line here, measure distance, and I'm going to come straight down to about this point. So this is everything we know. This, by the way, when you combine it together, is what they call the wind triangle, in case you've ever heard of that expression. This means that the wind in five minutes blew us 0.8 nautical miles to the east, and it also blew us 0.2 nautical miles to the north. Now you're probably sitting here saying, well, what does that mean for us? That means everything. So let me go ahead and get ourselves a calculator real fast. Let's work this out. So we know that we travel 0.8 nautical miles in five minutes. Now that would mean 0.8 divided by five means the wind was pushing us to the east 
by 0.16 nautical miles per hour. Now, if I want to calculate the actual, I'm nautical miles per minute, sorry. If I want to calculate the, what, that it was not, I simply multiply by 60 and whoosh, I can see that the wind is pushing us from the west to the east at 9.6 nautical miles per hour. So I'm going to go to my handy dandy uh, navigation helper here. I'm going to come down here and I have the sense says drift speed west 10 knots. This is drift speed towards the west. Since we're being pushed this way, we need to go ahead and put in a minus 9.6 knots. So you can see already we start getting a pretty funky calculation here. Now we're going to do the exact same calculation for the other wind component as well. Remember, this is the north wind component. So I'm going to go ahead and say 0 0.2 divided by 5, that's how long we traveled, multiplied by 60 means 2.4 nautical miles per hour towards the north. I'll come swing over here and go ahead and dial that in, and we are now all set to go. That means that our total wind speed today is 9.90 knots, and we know that our wind angle is 284 degrees. Now, that is all we need to know, right? Mm, not exactly. Uh, one of the problems we have is this particular wind here is actually going to be a magnetic wind. The reason we know it's going to be a magnetic wind is on account of the fact that we're using directions that were derived from magnetic headings, which means the actual wind has to be corrected for the magnetic deviation in where you're operating. Now, if you did everything in terms of relative wind or normal wind, you would probably know that this wind would be corrected for that. So if we were to actually pop over to the flight simulator right here, and we could do a quick little calculation to determine exactly what the magnetic deviation is in this particular area. So for example, if I want to go flip on an airport real quick to go ahead and check to see if there's anything that's nearby that we can steal, we'll go steal this one real quick. We'll go ahead and get ourselves a little bit of information. Now we're going to go just double click that real quick. Give me that. There we go. We know that the magnetic deviation is actually 4.3 degrees west in this region, which means our true wind speed, our true wind direction, since we have to reverse it, it's going to be minus 14 point, what did we say it was? 14.3 degrees, which means our true wind direction would have been 269.74 degrees at a speed of 9.90 knots. And that would be the wind speed that we would be operating at. Now, the thing you want to watch out for here is that this calculation is, is only as good as your existing navigational skills. If your plotting was off, if your calculation was off, that could really, really mess up everything that you've worked really, really hard here to go ahead and do. So double check too to make sure that your negatives and positives make sense. Remember, this is wind speed towards this direction. So that means if we're going east, this would be negative. If we're going west, this would be positive. This is also wind speed north, meaning wind speed towards the north. If we were going wind speed towards the south, this would be a negative number. And again, my wind speed is very accurate. Now, if you're interested, inside the flight simulator, when I actually tested this theory, my wind speed was 271 at 10 knots. Now, you're probably wondering why there's a discrepancy between 271 and the uh, 269.41. The reason for that was in my calculations, number one. But number two, it also has to do with the fact in flight simulator, the wind speed is random because of wind gusts. So even though I was very, very, very accurate, literally within 0 0.10, I was still had a slight discrepancy here. So again, that's an amazing way to quickly estimate wind speed and direction. Enjoy.